I was stopping in my coffee in the garden this morning. I realized there's some stuff there I can put together to make a nice little ital stew for lunch. While the garlic was harvested about a month and a half ago, it's ready for use now. So I've got my garlic. All of this here is from the garden. Garlic, a green scotch bonnet pepper. This is a young pepper, not fully mature, so I'm going to get a ton of flavor from it without that raw heat. It will still be spicy, mind you. I've got some fresh chives and I've been lucky this year. Tons of chives in the garden. I'm, I'm gonna give everything a wash. It hasn't been washed yet. Some okra. Or okra. I've got a small bygan or eggplant. Some of you call it melanjan. This, this is the the ends or the stems, the baby leaves of the pumpkin vine. And I'm gonna add that into my stew. I won't add the vine. I may add the tender parts of the vine here, but all these baby leaves and the little twirly whirlies here, all of that is gonna go into the stew, but I'm gonna give it a good wash and then a rough chop. Um, of course, some fresh thyme. Picked some green beans or String beans, whatever you call them. This here will be the sort of key ingredient, and that is chori bhaji or Jamaican kalaloo. It isn't the greatest right now, but small thing. There's another part of the pumpkin flowers here. That pumpkin vine, I'm gonna use some of that, but all I'm gonna use is the leaves. I'm gonna break the leaves off like so. And you've seen me prepare this before. I'm just gonna wash it, give it a rough chop, and that's going into the stew. And the last thing that's in the garden this morning is some cherry tomato. So all out of the garden. What I don't have in the garden this year is, well, not yet, the pumpkin. Yeah, there's no pumpkin to be found yet. But I do have some pumpkin in the fridge. I'm gonna dice up some pumpkin to put into it. We need some coconut milk, some coconut oil, some black pepper. Um, and I may have an ingredient or two that I may still add in here. We run through the ingredients. Yeah, I added some pumpkin. That is just about a cup and a half of diced pumpkin. I had some pumpkin in the fridge. But with the green beans, I just cut it in half. The okra, I cut into three pieces. Each, I took off the stems. We've got the fresh thyme. I'm just gonna use the leaves, but later on, we'll, I'll show you. With the eggplant, all I did was give it a good wash, and I diced it, left the skin on. I cut the scotch bonnet pepper into four pieces. Again, when handling scotch bonnet peppers, wear gloves, plus wash your hands with soap and water immediately after you touch your piggy or your eye or whatever else, you will pay the price. Oh, Chris, put the warning out there. The chives, I've got all chopped up. I've got the garlic, I smashed the garlic. I picked off the leaves, the baby leaves of the pumpkin vine there. And the Jamaican kalu or choy bhaji, it's been washed and chopped up. If you wanted to add some just regular onion in there, you can do that. The other ingredients you'll need, um, black pepper, a tiny bit of turmeric, coconut oil, and later on we'll talk about salt. But, yo, we're gonna make an owl oh, coconut milk. How could I forget? We need some coconut milk. On a medium flame, I've got my cast iron saucepan. Here, you need something with some a bit of height to the sides. Um, we are making a sort of a stew, as I said. What I'm gonna do is, it's on a medium flame, two and a half tablespoons of coconut oil. I'm gonna add my eggplant in first because I want to sort of give them a little bit of a crust to sort of maintain it, their integrity. So basically they won't fall apart as easily. I didn't salt it, I didn't do anything to it. You don't need to, trust me. It'll take about four minutes, but you'll get a lovely, golden color on the eggplant. I'm using a slot, slotted stone just to remove it. I can hear people complaining already. Metal on metal, Chris. Listen, press on if you're gonna complain about silly things and like that, yeah? Mute, <laughs> mute me out if you want. Oh, Jesus! Anyhow, we remove it, right? I'm gonna set that aside. You should still have a fair amount of that coconut oil in there. If you don't, you can add a little bit more because sometimes the um, eggplant would absorb quite a bit of it. 
At this point, we're gonna go in with the diced pumpkin because the pumpkin will take the longest to cook amongst everything here. At the same time, since the pumpkin is gonna lower the heat for me, I'm gonna go in with the garlic and the chives. That's the sort of flavor ingredients that's gonna help create that base of flavor that I'm always talking about. And whilst we're at it, I'm gonna go in for the thyme. These are the baby stems here. So the baby ones can go in, the one off the, the main stalk here. I'll show you what I mean. All oh, that can go in, this main stalk, that can go into the rubbish here. I'm trying to choke on that. No, no sir. Hit that, fresh ground black pepper. It's been a couple minutes since I added the diced pumpkin in there. And if you don't have pumpkin, but you have butternut squash or any one of those types of squash that you like using, feel free to drop that in there. At this point, I'm gonna go in with my beans, the okra, and of course, that scotch bonnet pepper that I told you guys is somewhat optional. I like the little kick, I like the little heat, that Caribbean sunshine. Just gonna add a tiny bit of turmeric in there and that's high in antioxidants and all kind of thing like that. The recipe itself will be with the principal recipe that is, with the full list of ingredients will be on CaribbeanPod.com very soon within the next 24 hours, yeah? So head over there after you've watched the video and you can fudge the recipe from there. It's been about three minutes since we added the, um, the string beans and the okra to it. So in goes the Jamaican Kalalu, what we call spinach or chorai bhaji in Trinidad and Tobago. I like to give you all the names that I can, so that's why you will hear me refer to it as Jamaican Kalalu because when you go to the, the stores in North America, you never see the word chorai bhaji. You always see the word Jamaican Kalalu. Just gonna go in with all of the pumpkin leaves in there now. Just tuck that down and that's gonna start to wilt down. Once it starts wilting down, I'm just gonna give it another minute. As it starts wilting down, I am going to give it a good stir. It's gonna turn my heat up to medium high and this is where we're gonna introduce some coconut milk to the fun here. That is what's gonna sort of braise and braise everything and pull it together like a real Caribbean stew. Just gonna hit that to stir, top things down. And the kitchen is already smelling incredible, no lighting. I may have failed to mention how much coconut milk I put in there and the answer is one and a half, no, one cup of coconut milk, yeah? I'm just gonna tuck everything down now, give everything a good mix. And this is where now you decide. Now, as a kid growing up on the islands, when we went the odd time to eat, there was a place down Pleasantville in San Fernando, um, just off the highway there. I think it was called Itella's Vital or something. I can't remember the, the name of the Itel restaurant there. But I was led to believe that there was never any salt in Itel food. So, correct me if I'm wrong. However, I am since I am eating this and I'm not going fully Itel. And by the way, Itel just means, um, in, in the simplest terms, vegan. So this is 100% vegan if, if you're really following along. I will add a bit of sea salt to here. Yeah? If you want to cut back on the salt altogether, may I recommend adding some diced celery in here. The celery has the properties, it gives the dish the properties of having salt. So if you really want to cut back on that salt, that is the way to go. It's been five minutes since we added the coconut milk and brought it up to a boil there. I want to maintain the integrity of the ingredients and by that I mean I want a bit of texture to it so I'm not going to cook it much longer than this. At this point, I'm going to add back all of the pre-cooked eggplant in there and the reason for adding it now is so that eggplant will soak up some of that extremely flavorful coconut milk. And when I say extremely flavorful, because you know, we've got that fresh garlic, the thyme, the chives in there, the vegetables would have, would have also released 
some niceness. The pumpkin would start falling apart now and releasing some of that sweetness, the little kick from the scotch bonnet. But you, you understand where I'm coming from? You understand where I'm going? Yeah? Remember, we ain't put the tomatoes in yet. So you can see it right over here. What I like doing here at this point, just a tiny bit more fresh ground black pepper. Totally up to you guys. I like to finish off with some black pepper. If you wanted to hit this at the very end, a little bit of lime juice or lemon juice, not much, maybe a teaspoon or so. Sometimes the Jamaican Kalaloo or Chorai Baji may tend to have um, properties which may itch your tongue when you're eating. It's sort of an itchy sort of tech, um, sensation you would get. That would eradicate that altogether. And that's from my experience anyways. It's cooking down nicely. Now I know the residual heat in this pot will continue cooking this further. I want it with a bit of a gravy. I want that strong sort of oil down kind of texture and flavor. When this is done, so I'm going to shut off my stove in about 30 seconds just before I do. And yeah, now is the time when you would taste, um, taste the salt and adjust it. Because remember, we didn't salt that eggplant. Eggplant tends to take on quite a bit of salt. It's, it's all up to you. If you're keeping this salt-free, I tell you, man, do your thing. What I'm going to do now is toss in that cherry tomato just to finish up things. I'm just going to tuck it down. Like so, tuck them down there. I'm gonna shut off the stove and I'm done. <laughs> Sup, soldiers? Listen, if you enjoy this recipe, I'd really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and click that bell notification thing. If you've made the recipe, take a picture and send it to me, email address down here. I'm really trying to tell people the email address, them butts will take the address and do all kind of thing with it. And Tag me on Instagram at Caribbean Pod. I really appreciate you guys and thanks for being in my kitchen with me today. Irene, Irene. Uncle Chris here signing off for today. I do hope you guys get an opportunity. You know, this is stuff and I try to make make it in such a way that just 90 or whatever percent of the ingredients came straight out of my garden. Uncle Chris's garden inspired Ital stew. Listen. Some boiled provisions, some green bananas, some, yo, even some tostones. If you have some tostones, you know, some boiled and fried plantain and you smash them and refry them. Listen, organize. Irie? Irie. What's up, soldiers? Don't forget to click subscribe. If you've already clicked subscribe, hit that bell notification thing. I want to all you missing out on the new videos, man. Come on, click.